Hello and welcome. My name is Samantha Dietrich and I'm incredibly happy to talk to you today about the Global Health Security Agenda, past, present and future. Just to start off with some introductions, I have more than 15 years of domestic and international experience in global health security, public health, pharmacovigilance and nursing in infectious and non-infectious diseases. My background specifically in disease surveillance and epidemiology, but over the years I've extended into laboratory capacity building as well as health system strengthening efforts. I've worked with government and non-government entities worldwide, and I currently serve as a lead for Merrick's Global Health Security Program, directing and managing a multifaceted series of projects related to global health security with an emphasis on biosafety and biosecurity. I'm also the chair of the Global Health Security Agenda Consortium, the GSAC, which is a global consortium of non-governmental stakeholders committed to helping make the world safe and secure from threats posed by infectious diseases. Since the implementation of the Global Health Security Agenda, otherwise known as the GHSA in 2014, many countries, international organizations, non-governmental and private sector entities have really made measurable progress in establishing or strengthening multi-sectoral systems capable of responding effectively to global health threats. The need for health security capacities in every country has never been clearer. This talk will provide a brief overview of the GHSA, including, including its current organization structure, the impact of GHSA and major lessons learned since it started in 2014, and the role and value of GHSA in a post-COVID world and the future of global health security. Starting out with GHSA past, before we look at when GHSA originated, it's important to see how it falls under the larger global health security concept. This certainly isn't a new concept, um, but prior to COVID-19, many people didn't quite understand what GHS is and how the GHSA falls under GHS. Global health security is defined as those activities required to minimize danger and impact of public health events that endanger people's health across geographical regions and international boundaries. When we think of global health security, we think about global preparedness and response, prevention, and building resilience to future outbreak of infectious diseases. So why does global health security matter? Uh, certainly in today's interconnected world, the pathogen can travel around the globe to major cities in as little as 24 to 36 hours. Population growth has brought people closer to one another and closer to animals, increasing the opportunity for pathogens to transmit between animals and humans. Environmental changes have also made it easy for disease vectors like mosquitoes to cover more territory. Microbes are becoming increasingly resistant to treatments such as antibiotics that have been around for years. We have new and re-emerging pathogens quickly spreading across the globe. And then there are uh, threats posed by bioterrorism, as well as accidental release from a laboratory. Strengthening global health security not only improves national health security, but also safeguards travel and trade and helps to protect economic and social development. Back in February 2014, the U.S. decided to join 28 other countries, World WHO, FAO, and OAE, to launch the Global Health Security Agenda, a shared commitment to accelerating implementation of international health regulations, IHR, and other relevant agreements that affect global health security, to advance progress towards a world safe and secure from infectious disease threats, to bring together nations to make new concrete commitments to achieving shared milestones and capacity building, and to elevate global health security as a priority for the national decision makers worldwide. The main goals of the GHSA are to prevent and reduce the likelihood of outbreaks, detect threats early to save lives, and provide multi-sectoral, international coordination and communication for rapid, effective response. It's through this initial partnership of nearly 50 nations, international organizations, and non-governmental stakeholders that the GHSA began facilitating collaborative capacity building efforts to achieve specific and measurable targets around biological threats, while also accelerating achievement of the core capacities required by IHR, the OIE performance of veterinarian services pathway, and other relevant global health security frameworks. When we think about GHSA today, um, it is now very much a strong partnership of more than 70 countries, international organizations, and non-government organizations, as well as private sector companies that have all essentially come together to achieve the vision of a world safe and secure from global health threats posed by infectious diseases. To realize this vision, the GHSA leverages and complements the strengths and resources of multi-sectoral and multilateral partners to address priorities and gaps in efforts to build and improve country capacity and leadership in the prevention and early detection of 
infective response to infectious disease threats. The GHSA acknowledges the essential need for a multilateral and multisectoral approach to strengthening both the global capacity and nation's capacity to prevent, detect, respond to infectious disease threats. These could be whether they're never naturally occurring, deliberate or accidental, capacity that once established would mitigate the devastating effects of Ebola, MERS that we saw years ago, and certainly today, COVID-19, as well as other highly pathogenic infectious diseases and bioterrorism events. The next phase of GHSA, the GHSA 2024, aims to be strategic and streamlined, have clear governance and collaboration structures and processes, increase engagement of the broader GHSA community, to measure progress, enhance accountability for delivering on commitments. GHSA 2024 aims to advance a multi-sectoral approach, support adherence to international human and animal health standards, collaboratively identify and address gaps and priorities in global health security, and advance sustainable financing for global health security efforts for all relevant sectors. This GHSA 2024 overarching framework lays out a strategic approach for addressing these priorities over the next five years. In terms of GHSA governance, the steering group is headed by a chair that rotates annually. The primary responsibilities of the GHSA chair are to organize steering group and GHSA-wide meetings and to lead the steering group in consultations to review and reaffirm the GHSA five-year roadmap, as well as guide GHSA in efforts going forward. The steering group's primary role is also providing strategic guidance and direction. This includes identifying overall GHSA priorities, providing leadership and coordination to support the implementation of priorities, tracking progress and commitments, and facilitating a target-driven multi-sectoral coordination and communication among all the GHSA partners. Selection of steering group members, which usually is about 15 countries, international organizations, and or non-governmental stakeholders, will prioritize the balance of relevant perspectives needed to provide leadership to the GHSA. FAO, OIE, and WHO also serve as permanent advisors to the GHSA steering group and facilitate GHSA alignment with multilateral health security efforts. The GHSA receives advice and guidance from these multiple multilateral organizations. There's also a secretariat function that's sustained by GHSA members providing support and continuity for communication and coordination among the GHSA members. You have your different action packages and the different action packages have their working groups that are multi-stakeholder working groups, facilitating regional and global collaboration towards specific GHSA objectives and targets. The purpose of the action package working groups is to focus international discussion towards specific coordinated actions in support of GHSA, highlight measurable approaches countries can adopt to accelerate, monitor, and report GHSA progress, and provide a mechanism by which member countries can make specific commitments and take leadership roles in the GHSA. The steering group also has the task forces, and these are flexible, time-limited task forces that can be renewed as necessary or on issues that will support the achievement of the GHSA strategic objectives. Currently, there are four uh, task forces in place. There's Accountability and Results Task Force, Action Package Coordination Task Force, Research and Development, as well as Advocacy and Communications Task now we'll go on to the GHSA future. So by 2024, more than 100 countries that have completed an evaluation of health security capacity will have undergone planning and resource mobilization to address gaps and will be in the process of implementing activities to achieve impact. This is the goal of 2024, the, tw the target. These countries will strengthen their capacities and demonstrate improvements in at least five technical areas to a level of demonstrated capacity or comparable level as measured by relevant health security assessments, such as those conducted within the WHO IHR monitoring and evaluation framework or joint external evaluation, the JEE. The GHSA 2024 overarching target provides a clear goal for its members. Collectively, the GHSA has already met the first component of the overarching target, which is that 100 countries have completed an evaluation of health security capacity. They're now working their way to reaching the final component of 100 countries demonstrating capacities in five technical areas. As of 2019, 47 countries have met the GHSA 2024 overarching target, which is fantastic. Looking at sort of this progress as we get closer to 2024, um, this uh, table here shows a comparison of GHSA and non-GHSA member 
um, capacity improvements across the 11 technical areas. So this analysis compares the rates of improvement of GHSA versus non-GHSA countries across 11 representative JEE technical areas between 2019 and 2020. A total of 47 GHSA countries and 56 non-GHSA countries with state party self-assessment annual reporting, otherwise known as SPAR, the SPAR scores in both years were included in the analysis. The results showed that GHSA countries averaged 3.7% improvement across the 11 technical areas versus 2.3% improvement in non-GHSA countries during this period. So uh, a slight but even perhaps major difference in, in just the fact that GHSA countries did show improvement um, given that they are a part of the GHSA versus the non-GHSA member countries. So when we think about the strategic objectives, communication objectives, and even country commitments, this next phase, um, GHSA, GHSA 2024, has really aimed to be strategic and streamlined, having clear governance and collaboration structure and processes, increased engagement of the broader GHSA community, measure progress, and enhance accountability for delivering commitments. GHSA 2024 aims to advance a multi-sectoral approach, support adherence to international human and animal law standards, collaboratively identify and address gaps and priorities in health security, and advance sustainable finding for global health security efforts for all relevant sectors. This GHSA 2024 overarching framework lays out a strategic approach for addressing all of these priorities over the next couple of years. All countries need to have the laboratory, trained workforce, surveillance, and emergency operation capabilities to prevent, detect, and respond to infectious disease threats. In addition to strategic objectives and communication objectives, countries have been asked to make commitments to deliver bold, measurable, and impactful actions towards the GHSA 2024 target. When we think about beyond 2024, um, I would say now more than ever, the world recognizes this moment as the most important time to highlight global health security and to address global health security agenda commitments. This is really a critical junction for the world, whether it will learn from this pandemic that we're currently facing or take meaningful action to prepare for future epidemics and pandemics and for the GHSA. I will say there's almost been a total um, limited visibility or really mention of the GHSA in the global COVID-19 response as well as evolving dialogue around the future of global health security and pandemic preparedness. There's also been misapprehensions about the mechanics of joining GHSA, how to engage non-government leaders beyond the US, to ambiguities and how to really join and support all these different action packages and task force. With that said, I would say the future of GHSA is, is unknown right now. Um, whether GHSA will come to and end in 2024, whether it will continue beyond 2024, or whether there's a need to create something new. I would argue that it's important to acknowledge that GHSA exists in the global health security space, and it has really been a foundation for actionable commitments and building relationships that can be leveraged for action. There's no need to reinvent the wheel, but we do need to focus on how we can learn from, build on, and improve this country-led partnership. How GHSA can evolve and grow beyond in a post-COVID world and beyond 2024, all questions that we need to focus on and, and try to answer. So what's going to be key to moving forward is really looking at GHSA, its importance in global health security, and its commitments, success stories, and accomplishments to date, and what more it can do to help improve countries' capacity to prevent, detect, and respond to infectious disease threats. Thank you so much for your time and participation. Hopefully this overview of the GHSA was helpful. It's been a pleasure to be part of this conference and the opportunity to join global health security and innovation communities in defining, communicating, solving our most critical challenges in preventing, predicting, detecting, and responding to global health security threats. Thank you so much, much appreciated.